Hello, my name is Morgana and I live in the Netherlands. I do a lot of work concerning the environment, the living environment, and today I would like to talk about spirituality and the earth and about spiritual resi resilience. Spirituality in the earth this is the name of one of the first URI cooperation circles I ever supported. Back in the 2010s, the connection with spirituality and nature and the reverence for nature, reverence for the earth, would be my focus in all of my work, be it professional or private. From childhood, I knew that my calling would be that of a devotee to the earth and all living beings. Guided by the legends, myths, folk tales, I travelled not only physically but also astrally. I learnt the way of the shaman and learned how to overcome the obstacles called life. It was sometimes lonely, but I had invisible friends, although they were not so invisible to me. Listening to the stories and parables from different spiritual traditions, I gradually built up my own foundation and inner sanctuary. What I didn't realise then, but do now, was that I was forming my own, what we call, circle of trust and love. Today, in a world of many crises, when we are often overwhelmed, I have come to realise that now, even more than ever, how important spiritual resilience is. But what do we mean by spiritual resilience? It is about maintaining a sense of purpose and meaning even during tough times. It's like having an inner strength that helps you navigate through life's challenges. This often comes from a deep connection to our beliefs, our faith, our community, and above all, nature. It's this ability to draw upon these sources of strength and stay grounded no matter what life throws your way. That sounds pretty empowering, don't you think? Resilience is about our ability to find hope and agency amid difficulty. From Dr. Simran Jeet Singh. Ellen Grace O'Brien also writes, when talking about cultivating spiritual resilience in challenging times, she writes, life expresses as a constant motion, light, shadow, pleasure, pain, joy, sorrow. Within that motion, within that activity is still a point of perfect, unchangeable, unconditional peace, which is the experience of the changeless, eternal divine self, the light of supreme consciousness, our spiritual nature. Accessing that inner stillness is our greatest resource for resilience. Meditation practice shows us how to find and know that point of stillness and discover the equilibrium, harmony and inner peace that opens our vision, our understanding, wisdom and capacity for compassion. No matter the situation, the solution is this, go straight to the goal, reconnect with your divine self and live from your soul, respond to the situation from the promptings of the soul not from the reactions of the mind or emotion. No matter what problems his disciples brought to him, the Kriya Yoga, Master Lahari, Mahasaya, would recommend meditate more. What does a daily practice look like? How do we build our circle of trust and love? For building spiritual resilience, it can be simple and tailored to what resonates most with you. These are some of the suggestions I would recommend for a daily routine. A morning meditation, spending a few times just meditating, rather like our practice of mindfulness, or say a prayer to center yourself for the day. But above all, make a connection with the sun. At the end of the day, an evening reflection before going to bed is recommended. Reflect on your day 
and end by recalling the moments which brought you happiness. Set intentions for tomorrow, but above all, make a connection with the moon. At other moments during the day, spend some time in a mindful moment. Engage in practice such as yoga, stretching, or walk in nature to connect your body and mind. Talk to the trees. They often have very many words of wisdom and are, of course, connected with all other trees. And also remember the roots that are also interconnected. Inspir inspirational training can also help build up spiritual resilience. Read or listen to a few pages from a book or an article that uplifts and inspires you. Sometimes writing things down can help you to focus too. Try writing with a pen. There is something about verbalising, seeing the words on paper, feeling your muscles as you write, which gives you an entirely different experience than just tapping at a keyboard. As an exercise, write down, for example, three things you're very grateful for. This tends to shift your focus to the positive aspects of life. One of the greatest things about building up your circle of trust is also to communicate and connect with your community. Communication and community. This is where we come in. Spend time with family, friends or a community that shares your values. This may not also always be possible in real life. So visualize your circle of trust and see those people who you love and trust. It can be acquaintances as well. But just visualize those people who you feel comfortable talking with. Incorporate these elements in ways that feel natural to you. The key is consistency and finding moments of peace and connection every day. Think about it. What part of this would be most interested? Would you, would you be most interested in trying? Trying, of course, is always dependent on making the commitment. And this also enhances self-discipline. In any event, have a daily chat with the moon. The moon which influences the ebb and flood of the mighty seas. You remember, we are made up of 80% water. Imagine how the moon influences us from day to day. Above all, heed the wisdom of the moon. I, who am the beauty of the green earth and the white moon amongst the stars and the mystery of the waters and the desire of the heart of woman and man, call unto your soul, arise and come unto me, for I am the soul of nature who gives life to the universe. Thank you.